Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Took this Montero in for its annual safety inspection and it did not pass. I was told the lower ball joints had failed, so we wanted to bring it into the shop and check it out and make sure that the ball joints were failed and replace them if needed. It turns out it does not need lower ball joints. The front wheel bearings are actually slightly loose and the truck was not making any noise or grinding or vibrations at highway speed. So the very small amount of play is kind of normal on a truck like this where the it has inner and outer bearings inside of this hub. They can be, we can open this up and we can re-tighten them because they're not really worn out. They're just kind of worn in a little bit. If, if they were too far gone, making noise, we'd replace them. But in this case, we're just gonna re-tighten them and save some money. And that should take care of the looseness in the suspension. I'm gonna rock the tire and wheel side to side. There's not much play. It's just the normal amount of play that's in the drag link uh, steering. But if we go up and down, you can see that the ball joint isn't moving, but the rotor is moving. So it felt like a failed lower ball joint when actually the wheel bearing was loose. So now we're gonna put the vehicle on the ground, loosen the lug nuts, raise and support it, and readjust the wheel bearing. Normally you'd have a chrome center cap here. This one's missing, you'd have to pop it off to get to these lug nuts. I'm gonna use a 21 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. I'm gonna break all the lug nuts free before I put the vehicle in the air. Just go along, break them all free. And raise and support the vehicle. You can use a jack and jack stands. We're gonna use our two post lift. <laughs> use the lug nut socket to finish taking them off. Take the wheel and tire off. We need to remove this dust cap. We use a small pry bar or we can use a large flat blade screwdriver. Just pop it off. I'm gonna use a rag to wipe some of this grease away. There's a snap ring under here. It needs to be removed. Can I see it? And there's a washer. So you don't wanna lose the washer either. It's underneath the snap ring. Spin the snap ring around here. So it's right there at the top, the opening. And there's a little washer behind it. Take some snap ring pliers and spread it open. I'm gonna try to spread it off carefully. You don't wanna use any like screwdrivers or anything to pry this off because you can ruin the snap ring. I'm just gonna gently pry it off and then carefully hold on to it so it doesn't spring across the, wherever you're working on the truck. So grab that snap ring and then there's a tiny washer here. I'm gonna grab that too so it doesn't get lost. Put those aside so we can reuse them. I need to remove these six bolts holding on the hub flange. I'm gonna use this punch, I'm gonna put it into the rotor, put it against the brake, and then I can break these free. The punch keeps it from spinning on me. spin out all the bolts. Get the last one out. Gonna pop this cap off with the pry bar. Slide it right off the splines. 
use a rag to wipe some of this grease out. There's two small Phillips head screws inside here holding on this lock ring. So you wanna make sure you're a good size uh, Phillips head screwdriver. This is a number three. I'm gonna get it in there and make sure I push right down on it because these can strip easily. But they shouldn't have much torque because so that one came free. And this one here, just like that. Take them both out, don't lose them. You wanna be able to reuse them. They're very small. I'm gonna use a small right angle pick and just pull this lock ring out. Just kinda of get underneath it. It's probably stuck in there with the grease. this too. So I want to put it aside in a safe place. So there's two holes in here. There's the threaded holes for those two screws and then opposite of those they have some grease in them are the two holes that you use to tighten the bearing. So we can see this this bearing lock is pretty loose. It spins on here. So if we spun it all the way off You don't have to do this, I just wanna show you what's inside here. So if you took it all the way off, your wheel bearings are in here. They look like they have plenty of grease in there. So I'm gonna reinstall this. And by tightening this ring, you're setting the tension on that wheel bearing. If this is too loose, you have too much play. If it's too tight, it won't spin at all. So that's pretty tight. But we're gonna set it to the correct torque. So I have a spindle drive socket. Uh, there is a specific one for a Mitsubishi. We didn't have access to it, but if you take a three quarter ton GM one. It's got, normally it has uh, four pins on it. You can grind off two and leave two opposite and they'll line up just about right. And there's four holes. So two of the holes have threads in them. Those are the smaller holes for the screws. Don't use those holes because you don't want to damage the threads. You want to use these bigger holes here and the tool is going to go in there and just kind of sit in here See, I'm loosening it and tightening it. I'm going to torque it to this factory specification is 129 foot pounds. It's a little easier to just go to 130 on your torque wrench. So I'm going to torque it to 130 foot pounds. And when it clicks, I'll stop. Once it clicks, you're all set. So this wheel bearing is currently over tightened. You torque to the 130 to basically set it and you can see it won't spin. So clearly that's not gonna work. So now we need to back it off to zero torque and then we'll retorque it to 18 foot pounds and then back it off to 30 to 40 degrees. I'm gonna do 30 degrees on this truck and that should be just enough play that it's within spec and also allows it to spin freely. So 
use the socket again and the breaker bar now. Don't use your torque wrench. Torque wrench is not for removing things. So now it spins freely, so there's zero torque on there. So I'm just going to bring it back down until it stops. So there's less for me to spin. I'll torque this to 18 foot pounds. Now I've switched to a smaller torque wrench that goes to 18 foot pounds. And I'm going to torque this to 18 foot pounds. doesn't take much, it'll go right there. It doesn't take much. You can barely hear it click. I'm going to use a torque angle gauge. So let me get this thing set up here. Set up where it needs to be. The little arm in there. I'm going to put the arm in here. Make sure I'm set to zero. And then we're going to back it off. So it's not going to go to 30 degrees on this side because we're not tightening it. It's going to go backwards. So if zero is 360, we're going to go to 330. So that's 30 degree turn. there and it was 30 to 40 degrees but because I want a little more tension because this bearing is worn in I'm going to go to 30 degrees. I'm going to put the lock ring back in. The tab sits into there and if it doesn't it's got tons of holes in it it should line up with the, th the threaded holes. If it doesn't you can adjust uh, this up to 20 degrees but it should line up. They're kind of hard to see because of all the grease. Reinstall the lock ring. It's got a tab. It's going to line up the tab on the top here. A little keyway. It's got a ton of holes in it, so it should line up with the threaded holes for the screws. So I can see it. It's kind of hard to see with all the grease, but it lines up with these two here. Now we'll get this bottom one started. They don't line up, you can adjust the bearing lock nut or the spindle lock nut. But these will get tightened down. They don't take much torque, just tighten them like that. That keeps that nut, spindle lock nut, from spinning. It locks it in place. So I can only, I can only move that much in the little keyway. You can reinstall this cover now. So get it over the splines. It doesn't line up with the holes, so you can turn it. Just like that. And reinstall all these bolts, make sure the lock washers don't fall off. You don't want to have them on there. Get them started by hand. Going to use a short ratchet and a 14 millimeter socket. Just thread these down. I don't want to go fully tight with them because I'm going to come back and torque them. I just want to get them seated. Snug that up and I'll come back and torque them. Torque spec on these bolts was 35 to 43 foot pounds, so I'm going to set my torque wrench to 38 foot pounds, kind of in the middle. We'll just do these in the cross pattern. Use our punch here to keep that from spinning. Once they click, they're all set. Take the punch out. 
Don't forget to reinstall this little flat washer. Now we've got our snap ring. Get it kind of close. Hold on to it so it's spring all over the place. Push it down into the groove like that. It's in that little groove on the axle. That's where it needs to live. This axle will have a little bit of end play, that's normal. And these are dead blow, you can get these from 1aauto.com. Just tap the dust cap back on. Reinstall the wheel and tire. Start the lead nuts by hand. Just gonna use the socket to snug these up. I get the last one snugged up. Put the vehicle on the ground and torque the lug nuts. Double check the wheel bearing. So it has a very, very small amount of play, which is normal and within spec. If it was too tight, the vehicle wouldn't want to roll and you'd cause excessive friction and you'd uh, reduce the bearing life. So it needs to have a little bit of play in it. I'm going to torque the lug nuts in a cross pattern to 80 foot pounds. Once it clicks, you can stop. At this point, you can reinstall your center cap if you have one, the job is complete. So if your truck does need front end parts, you can buy quality ones at 1AAuto.com and get fast and free shipping. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.